Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James. I do fountain pen reviews, if you hadn't figured that out by now. And today I want to share with you some of my favorites and some stinkers from this year. So this year for me was a good year in the fountain pen hobby, just an enjoyable year. I found some great pens. Some of them I expected to be great. Some of them I didn't, but they were anyway. So I've broken this down into three areas as I want to share with you about these pins. I have, of course, the standard top five pins. These are pins that turned out to be, for me, kind of the top five pins. Now that will be a surprising list because there are pins that are not on this list that I really thought would be. Like up until today, I thought they would be on this list. But when I sat down and looked through what I'd reviewed this year, um, this is the list that emerged, and, and I like it. I like this list a lot. They're just, the truth is, I could have had a top 20 because it was that good and enjoyable a year with fountain pens, and I hope that you've had at least as good a year in your fountain pen uh, explorations and enjoyment as I have this year. And then I will have, of course, five pens that are at the bottom of the list. Now, some of these are at the bottom of the list because there, there are always going to be five pens at the bottom of any list greater than five, right? So some of them aren't really that bad. A couple of them are real stinkers. One of them I've never reviewed. I'm not going to review it. I have thought about trying to find uh, some way to uh, commandeer a nuclear submarine to blow it up underwater because I just like this pen that much, but I haven't been able to do that, and that probably just got me tagged on some YouTube filter as a problem somewhere. Anyway, uh, th that list will be interesting as well, of course. And then I have my favorite list, and that is the list of pens that surprised me the most in various ways because they were better or worse or whatever. Uh, just interesting pens for the year. So let's uh, flip that camera, grab that pen roll, and dive right in. Okay, so the first pin is probably not a big surprise. It is the Platinum 3776, that beautiful blue with rhodium trim. But this pin, the big deal is not the appearance of the pin. It is that wonderful soft, fine nib, which at first I really uh, wasn't sure I was going to like it. And then I just kind of determined one night, I'm going to like this pin. I'm going to find a way to enjoy writing with this pen, uh, which of course doesn't always work that way, but it worked. What I did is I started working on some things that were work-related, school-related, and just I got out of the way of the pen. That's the only way I can describe it. All of a sudden, I realized I was writing pages of notes and just enjoying this pen, and I finally somehow uh, just kind of figured out the zen of this pen or something. Really love that 3776. The next one I want to share with you is the Pilot Capless. This is just such a well-made, excellent pen. I didn't think that I would enjoy it all that much, but I do. I love, listen to that, that the snick snick because it's just so well made. The nib is excellent. Whichever one I have, I have both their uh, special alloy nib, which came with this pen, and then I have um, another, which is the gold stub nib, and both are excellent. I swap them out depending on what's going on or just in a regular rotation. Excellent, excellent pen, and now I understand why people make such a big deal of it because it really is just a great pen. I didn't think I'd like it, but I do. I almost could have put that on the surprise list. Next is this Black Beauty, an all ebonite Denoble DN. 500. This pen was sent to me uh, for review. Unfortunately, they are not producing pens right now, but I hope that they will be able to again because this is, it's one of my favorite pens, period. Absolutely top five list, period, but certainly deserves a spot in the 2021 top five list. It is all ebonite. It has a wonderful two-tone number six Bach nib that just writes beautifully. This is just a pen that is just this pen. You give this to somebody to write with and suddenly they get why fountain pens are the big deal that they are. It's just 
excellent in every way, and I thoroughly enjoy that pen, and it deserves that top five spot. The fourth pen I want to share with you in the top five is not a new pen for 2021, but it was a new pen for me, and this is the Pen BBS 323 in the Mocha. This is one of the aluminum pens, and this I didn't think I would like it. Okay, look at the shape. I don't know. I just, it didn't, it's not me. I didn't think I would like this pen. Why would I like this pen? Uh, you open it up, and of course it doesn't post, and so, you know, that's that's a downer. But uh, I just didn't think this pen was my thing. However, this pen is fantastic. Pen BBS, excellent medium nib, round medium nib, and of course, number six, just writes beautifully, reliably, and just an excellent pen. This always has a brown ink in it, I believe. Right now it has diamine, chocolate brown. It just writes beautifully, and it it feels uh, ergonomically uh, just a very, the shape is form follows function. So what I didn't like about it turns out to be what I do like about it. I could have put this on the surprise list because it surprised me that I liked it at all. And instead, it's become a top five pin for me for 2021. And then the last one on this list or the top one on this list, this I will, the rest were not in any particular order. I am going to put this as number one for 2021 because look at the beauty of the resin of this TNZ piston filler pen. Uh, it's a, a new pen offering in the fountain pen world came out this year. You probably saw several reviews go up about it and it's excellent. It's well made. It writes very well. And I have just thoroughly enjoyed this pen. It has a great number six steel nib. This one is in medium as well, smooth as butter and just gorgeous pen and well-made and not a copy of anything, just a nice, simple, classic pen design. Well done, TNZ. I hope we see more out of you in 2022. So those are my top five pens that I have enjoyed the most this year. Uh, could have been 20 more pens on this list. You have no idea how close it was for some of these. Some went on and off the list as I looked through my list of pens I reviewed because there are just so many great pens. But I'll tell you what, some of my favorite pens, top five pens of 2021, didn't make this list because they're coming in 2022 in reviews. I have a backlog of pens here in another pen case, and I can't wait to share those with you because there are already contenders for next year's list. Okay, now let's look at the list of the infamous, the bottom five pens. I'm going to go with the most obvious first. It was a recent review that had some negativity in it. I apologize, but facts be facts. And my Carandash 849 fountain pen came to me as a dud. And I'm still, you know, conflicted about that review just because it's a shame. Uh, still no recourse from the company and from their customer service. So that still stands. And that's why it's still on this list as a uh, customer service stinker. But I still love the design of this pen. As many of you know, if you watch the review, my nib was a dud. And so, and it just, I had all kinds of problems with this pen, but the nib was awful. It was split wrong and just, it was a trash nib. So I put in a Diplomat Magnum nib and now it's wonderful. The pen writes well, it's reliable. This nib was well made as the other one I wish it had been. And so now the pen really doesn't deserve to be on this list, but that's where it is because as it came in the box, it was a stinker. Next, another known quantity for some of you, the Lanbateau, Lanbateau 3088 Platinum Kurdos clone. This pen, what to say about this pen? It looks great, doesn't it? If you like the Platinum Kurdos or you're curious about the Kurdos, then this pen looks like it ought to be a great contender. And a lot of people complain about Lanbateau nibs. Oddly enough, the nib in this pen was great. I actually really like the nib in this pen. Unfortunately, this nib is connected to this pen. <laughs> it shouldn't be because the pen overall is just 
frustrating. And I actually got, look at that, see the, see how the cap already, the cap is no longer even always going up and staying up. The pin dries out faster than a Texas summer. And so this pin, if I were gonna have a number one stinker, that would actually bump the car and dash from that spot. Next is actually a pin I really wanted to like. Actually, I wanted to like all these, didn't I? I really wanted to like it. I love the design of this pin. Of course, that's not original to Hong Dian, so there's that. Uh, but the main thing about this particular pin, and I understand that some of you have not had the same experience, is that it dries out. It has a great nib, it has good design, it seems well put together, but, and I think it might have to do with the fact that this is spring-loaded and air uh, flows in and out of that opening, maybe. Uh, or maybe it's just something to do with the snap cap, slip cap. Something doesn't seal well, and this pin dries out horribly. And and the only fountain pen, <laughs> not a fountain pen, the only fountain pen that I have that's ever leaked in my pocket, staining, because it was in this carrying pouch by uh, Gallon Leather, staining this forever with uh, diamine, uh, uh, not Oxblood, uh, Oxford Blue. And uh, that gets it a ding by itself. It's I'm always telling people, no, my fountain pens don't leak. Well, guess what? This one did, but worse, dries out all the time. It's just unusable because it'll dry out overnight, kind of like the Lanboteau does. And that's a shame because in every other way, it could have been, should have been, would have been a great pen, which seems to be a theme on that list thus far. So let's stick with that theme. <laughs> this is the Parker 51. And let me just say this straight up front. This is actually a great pen in terms of does it write well? Is it comfortable to use? Is it reliable? Is it uh, usable with bottled inks? In all those ways, things that I look for, it's a great pen. It's even a, it's made just fine. It's not though uh, a $90 pen as Parker thinks. It's made like a lot of $10 pens I have. It's made like a lot of $20 pens I have. It's made like some $3 pens that I have. And those are not all Chinese manufacture either, okay? Uh, so don't even go there. The fact is this pen is just way overpriced and for some, uh, not true enough to the original Parker 51 design. Now I'm going to stay neutral on that part because I didn't need it to be true to the Parker 51 design entirely. I'm okay that it's a cartridge converter because if I wanted one of those vacuum bags, then I'd have bought a, uh, a vintage pen. The problem for me simply is marketing and pricing seems a little bit cynical for what this pen actually is. This is a wonderful uh, everyday carry range pen and should be priced accordingly, but it's not. And so if somebody says, hey, is that pen worth the price? Well, no. Is it worth a price? Absolutely. Wonderful pen, but not at that price. Now, this is the other end of things. Sometimes you will hear people say uh, that some pens are too cheap to be copied. And you might be thinking that this is a copy of the original Parker 51. But I say nay, nay. No, this is a copy of a Wing Sung copy of a Parker 51. And you might say, wait, why would anybody copy a two or three dollar wing song? And I would say, I have no idea why anybody would, but someone did. And I think they made it out of melted down bread bags and paper clips. This pen is horrible. You can see that it is dirty with old ink, and that's because I put this in the drawer. I did not care that it was dirty. I do not care that it is dirty. That ox blood can eat this pen into oblivion. It won't, but it could, and I would have no bad feelings, and that's terrible for a fountain pen user to say, but this pen just stinks to high heaven, as my grandfather or grandmother might say. It's a bad one. I mean, the metal is not even the right metal. This is light, chintzy stuff. The clip, I don't think it'll come through on camera because, you know, in the sale picture on eBay, it looked fine. But this clip is like 
I, I, I don't even know. Somebody melted down their old pot or something, and I think it was a pea pot. I don't think it was a frying pan. It's awful. It's just awful. This one, I would just, uh, I don't know. You know those target ships that the Navy uses where they blow up an old ship and let it sink to the bottom of the ocean to become a home for a coral reef? I'd like this to be on that ship. Right, right where the bombardment hits. It's, it's awful. I have, I have probably need of therapy over my feelings about that pen. Let's move on to surprising pens and, and pick things back up. Okay, let's start with an easy one, shall we? Most surprising pen. So this is the Jin Hao. This is the 85 and the Flighter. You can also get the 86, which just gives you a plastic barrel instead of a, a metal barrel. And you can get this in various colors. You can get it in wood. But this is basically Jin Hao's answer to the Parker 51 reissue. And it is also an excellent pen. Now, I'm going to tell you that the Parker 51 is better. It's just not you know, $90 better, but this is a surprisingly good pen. Even, and I shouldn't be surprised, Jin Hao makes some great pens, but this one just, I think it's excellent. And so I, I thought it deserved a place on the list. Another recently reviewed pen that I thought, this is in that list of things I thought that I would not like, but I actually do, the Wan Kai Mini. I now understand why this is kind of a cult favorite among fountain pen users who are into pocket pens. It really does write well. It's excellent. The only thing I would change, I think it would be awesome if this came in a number six nib, but this number five is actually a great little nib, and it's a wonderful eyedropper, but the other trick up its sleeve and, and surprising, I think, to most people maybe not familiar with it, it can also use short cartridges. So that just widens the possibilities as well. Excellent, excellent, surprisingly good usable pocket pen. Sticking with eyedroppers for a moment, the Pen BBS 469 is a surprisingly good pen. Not surprisingly good because it writes well, but my luck with eyedroppers as a uh, kind of a, a renewed fountain pen user was not that great. The first few just uh, were duds, and I just was about to give up on them, and then I found a couple of eyedroppers that worked well. Among those are, uh, or is, this pen. I are. I guess I'm saying are because there are two ends to this pen, and both ends work really well. Is that what I'm going to tell you, I guess? But this one, in the Starry Night Resin from Pen BBS, I thought it would be kind of a... Uh, Ah, what's the right word? Kind of just a gimmicky pen. But this has great use in everyday life. It really does. Because here's what I do. I have kept the original Pen BBS two-tone fine nib in this end. And as you can see, I use it a lot. It's almost out of ink again. And this is their round fine. It's just an excellent nib. Um, I'm more of a medium nib person, but Pen BBS fines. I'm really satisfied with. And then on this end, I do not have the rollerball nib that came with it installed, although that worked okay. Instead, I have one of Pen BBS's calligraphy nibs. And I can't see even with my readers, but perhaps you can see which one this is. It may be the number one. And I love this calligraphy nib, but I use this pen as a way to test those because I can, it's a great. EDC because you can write with a normal nib, you can write with a calligraphy nib, and you don't have to carry two pens. Only thing that would make this better would be if I could clip it in a pocket, but it would probably be ridiculous if I did. Just an excellent pen. I don't have problems with burping or anything like that. It comes with O-rings, and I think that does indeed help, but just an excellent option. And I think one that is underappreciated by a lot of people in the fountain pen world. I think this is better uh, than people think with more use than it often is given credit for. And another pen that I think is just excellent and has been a, a very widely well-received is the Jin Hao 100. The reason I put this on the surprising list is because I thought that it might not be that standout a pen. I thought it might just blend in with so many other dual-fold uh, patterned pens. But Jin Hao, I think, knocked it out of the park, in part because it's such a great value. Where do you get, this was, I think, $17 delivered. Where do you get a pen 
with the Galaxy Blue resin, which I kind of have started collecting Galaxy Blue resin pens because I just love it uh, for that kind of money. And then one with such an excellent number six steel nib. This pen just writes like a dream. The ergonomics, of course, are long proven, and it's just fantastic. So yeah, I, I'm putting this on the surprising list, not because I'm surprised that Jin Hao could do it, but that I'm surprised at just how well they did. I really love the Jin Hao 100. Just an excellent pen. Could have easily been in that top five list as well. And finally, finally, this pen, uh, Goofy. This pen is Goofy, and it's, a, of course, pattern after a platinum pen from back a long time ago. Uh, but the Moon Man Majan uh, Q1, or as I like to call it, the pickle pen. Uh, you know, it's goofy, it's weird, but why is it on the surprising list? Because goofy and weird aren't the surprise. No, they're not. What's surprising is that both, it comes with a fine and an extra fine nib, and they're both good. Again, it's a reliable eyedropper. I keep Pelican Dark Green. I like to have that in at least one pen at all times. I fill this pen with that initially, and have kept it in this pen all along. And when I want to do just a quick note to somebody using Pelican Green, this is this is my go-to pen. And uh, I just thought it would be just a dorky little pen. And instead, you know, it's actually, it's not a bad pen to write with. It actually, it works. So there you go. There's the surprising list of 2021. So what is your list for this year? What are the pens that made you go, oh, wow? And what are the pens that went, why? What is your list? Share those in the comments below. And God bless you. Have a great 2022. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope that this has brought value to you in 2021. Have a great week.